Welcome back everyone to the International Film Operations Film Festival Chapter 2. My name is Fernando Rivera, I am your warden, your main judge, and I'm back to review the next batch of submissions of short films for this competition. Now, if this is your first time watching the film festival, I strongly recommend that you check out Chapter 1 before moving on to Chapter 2. This way you're caught up, you're up to speed, everyone's going to have a good time, and we have the link down below for Chapter 1 for you to check out, so please check it out. As you already know, IFO is dedicated and committed to bringing you some of the best voting strategies that are on bias for our selected short films. We believe that allowing the people, you, the filmmaker, to control part of the vote is best. We believe that the peer review voting establishes an equal opportunity, equal in power, ability, and effect as an organization who promotes the advancement of young and up and coming independent filmmakers. We also believe that the peer review method is likely to allow and promote active learning opportunities. Now, as your warning, I already have a large number of short films to review for this competition and for chapter two, I've already selected a pretty extensive collection of short films that have made it into this competition. Now, as you know, since we started this competition about two years ago, we given an opportunity to exhibit all of the filmmakers films, whether or not you've been nominated or even made it into the final round of the competition. Now, of course, for some reasons of continuity, timing, and of course, copyright songs of the filmmakers short films and continuity, we share the sources of all the short films submitted into this competition on the link below on the description for you, the audience to enjoy. Once the short films who made it are nominated for the final, we might show the full film at the final chapter of this festival. And now introducing to you the first film of this competition, all the way from Spain, trying to get the honor of the South American competition, directed by Ruben Garcetta, the first animated short film of this competition, Re-Animal. Antonia, ¿que no escuchas el teléfono o qué? Cógelo, que seguro que es tu madre dando por culo. Espero que cuando salga tenga el plato en la mesa, que hoy vengo con hambre. ¿Eh, eh? ¿Eh? ¡No! ¡No! Según palabras de Javier Antúnez, gerente de Duramás, el producto deja en pañales a la conocida Viagra, ya que su efecto es diez veces superior a esta. Vaya, se podría decir que no hay muerto que se le resista. Tony Pistas, investigador privado. Pase, le estaba esperando.
La policía me ha dicho que no dejara entrar a nadie aquí, pero el hermano del señor Mendoza insistió en contratar un detective. Bien hecho. En estos casos es mejor contar con un maestro de la observación como yo. Por cierto, señorita, ha perdido un pendiente. Uh, sí, sí, gracias. Se me debe haber caído por ahí. Bien, si me disculpa, voy a comenzar con mi trabajo. ¡Qué interesante! Es hora de usar mi infalible arma secreta. Be, 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 be. Barro, aquí. Huellas de barro. Todo apunta a que es bastante probable que el asesino haya sido el jardinero. ¿Tenían los señores jardinero? Sí, claro. Martínez se encarga de ello. Aunque hace días que no viene a trabajar. Lo he llamado a casa, pero nadie coge el teléfono. ¿Eh? ¿Ha escuchado ese ruido? Me parece que tenemos compañía. Hmm. Quien esté ahí dentro, que salga con las manos en alto. Llevo un arma y no dudaré en usarla si es necesario. Tengo licencia para matar. Salga ya. No se lo repito otra vez. ¡Uy! Interesante. ¿Eh? Dígame. Soy Paco España. Eh, tiene que ayudarme. He llamado a la policía y nadie me coge el teléfono. Eh, no sabía a quién recurrí. Alguien entró en mi casa. Está en la cocina revolviéndolo todo. Eh, de esa prisa. Eh, eh. No me haga daño. No me haga daño, por favor. No. ¿Eh? ¡Ay, me cago en la madre que me dio parece! Parece que el respetable ha entrado en júbilo. Está pidiendo el rabo del animal. Increíble faena la de esta tarde digna del no, mejor no, de los no, maestros. ¿Qué pasa? ¡No, alejate de mí! ¡Que yo soy un entendido! ¡Y te aseguro que la faena no se merece el rabo! ¡No, no! Oye, ¿sigues ahí? No te escucho bien. Bueno, llámame más tarde. Parece que no tienes buena cobertura. ¿Qué, y ¿Quién es? Traigo un paquete para su vecino de la puerta 11. Pero no está en casa. ¿Puedo dejárselo a usted? Claro, claro, no importa. Firme aquí, por favor. Un momento. Este logotipo es el mismo que el que tiene la llave que se le cayó. Oh, ya sé por dónde encontrarte. Aurelio, cada día la sirvienta cocina peor. El estofado está prácticamente incomestible. Mira que le tengo dicho que solo nos gusta la carne de rinoceronte blanco. Esa chica es estúpida. El otro día se le ocurre preguntarme que por qué mataba animales si luego no me los comía. Por deporte ignorante. La caza es un deporte. 
La culpa es de esos amigos come hierba con los que se junta, que le llenan la cabeza de absurdas ideas. ¿Qué te pasa? Parece que estés viendo el fantasma del mismísimo generalísimo. ¡Arriba España! ¿Pero qué gilipolleces me estás contando? No intentes tomarme por estúpido. Vuelve a la mansión y no regreses sin lo que te he pedido. Espero que esta vez te des más prisa. Antúnez, no pienso volver allí ni loco. Si quieres abrir esa puerta, tendrás que ir tú mismo a por la llave. Estoy seguro de que ese viejo tacaño de Mendoza guarda todo su dinero aquí. Y tú no haces más que cagarla. ¿Estáis buscando esto? ¿Y quién cojones eres tú? El que acaba de resolver un caso. ¡Vosotros sois los culpables del asesinato de los Mendoza! ¿Qué estás diciendo? ¡Yo no he matado a nadie, idiota! ¡Yo lo vi todo! ¡Fueron esos animales! ¡Ellos los mataron! ¡Se acabaron las explicaciones! ¡Yo he perdido demasiado tiempo con vosotros! ¡Máximo! No es nada personal. Pero como comprenderás, no sería prudente dejar testigos. Y ahora mismo ya no te necesito para nada. Tranquilo, no te pongas nervioso. Esto podemos arreglarlo sin agujerear a nadie. ¿Eh? ¿De dónde ha salido este pedo? <risa> Un momento. ¿Rocky? ¿Eres Rocky? Pero si sí hace ya varios veranos que te abandoné en aquella gasolinera. Tienes que entender que las vacaciones son sagradas. ¡Detente, maldito chucho! ¡No! Madre, por poco no lo contamos. ¡Ayuda! ¡Sacadme de aquí! ¿Qué ha sido eso? Parece venir de dentro de la habitación. ¡Deprisa la llave! Hay, hay, hay un hombre aquí dentro. Se encuentra bien. Hemos cometido un terrible error. Tenemos que detener la producción de las Ibericus Maximus. Los gases que expulsa la fábrica están reviviendo a los animales. ¿Pero quién lo ha encerrado aquí? No lo sé. Solo recuerdo que estaba trabajando en el laboratorio y que me golpearon en la cabeza. Parece que hay alguien que quiere ocultar lo que está pasando aquí. El señor Mendoza. Llamé a su casa, pero no había nadie y le dejé un mensaje en el contestador. Es la única persona a la que le conté lo que estaba pasando. Un momento. Ah, ¿Dónde he visto esto antes? ¡Ah! Interrumpimos la programación para leerles el siguiente comunicado. Desde siempre los animales han estado sometidos a la tiranía de algunos humanos, siendo tratados como un objeto de usar y tirar. C como habréis visto, tienen la ciudad bajo control. Ha llegado su hora. Han vuelto para daros el mismo trato que les disteis. Pero tranquilos, no debéis temer. Como vosotros decís, el animal no sufre.
And there you have it guys, that was Re-Animal. I really liked the plot twist, they play with the name. I thought that was kind of funny. Now, like always, before we go into my review, we're gonna see what my colleague Scott Mena had to say about this film. Let's get into it. Great job on the character expressions and clean movements. Felt like an adult version of Wallace and Grumbit, if it were a mystery. Now, being a fan of those films, I have to say I agree with Scott there 100%. Moving on. The voice work overall was well done. So now, going into what I have to say about this film, about my review, I gotta say, I enjoyed it a lot, honestly. First off, you already heard what I said. I really like the play on words with re-animal, you know, reanimated film, animated film, reanimated animals coming back to life like zombies. I thought that was hilarious. The characters overall were really unique, were really funny, and that's something that really kept me interested throughout the film. The detective was really quirky. I like how he was dressed very professional, but yet he had all these weird tools to do the job for. I really like how each character was its so unique, whether it was the husband and wife that got killed off, whether it was the robber, whether it was the maid. I thought all the characters were really funny. I thought this person really did, like Ruben did a great job on delivering these characters and really making me feel like I was a part of the world they were in. I felt like I could see this as a kid, but I love the adult humor he thrown throughout it, you know, with like how the animal got on top of the the table to take the fur back and she took the skin off the lady or when the other animal cut the head off of the husband and then the plot twist at the end that it was the maid helping the animals and then the cliffhanger. I, I was really interested to see what a part two was would be like. I think this was a great film and really did a great job of visual storytelling and sto telling a story. Even though it was a cartoon, it was hilarious, it was dark, it was great. And it was a film that I really enjoyed seeing. So Ruben, great job.
there you have it. That was the Sasir. Now, like always, we're going to get into my review, but first, we're going to look at Scott and Nilo's review, and we're going to get into Nilo's review right now. So first off, the sand clock was up. I really enjoyed this short film. I'm a fan of languages and moments based on colors, music, wardrobe, and performance without using any dialogue, and I agree with that. Visual storytelling is key. Good camera work in a single shot, but this moods are much better done on longer scenes. Okay, like the like the one shot take would have preferred bigger scenes. I you know different scenes. I totally agree with that. But you know what? I really like how they did this one. Now let's move it into Scott's review right now. So here we go for Scott. Would have liked the camera to stay still in the beginning a bit longer. The camera could have cut to a long shot of the two of them and then follow the protagonist in her journey in her given time. But knowing that you wanted to do this in a long one shot, I see that you tried to do it the whole thing in five minutes. I did enjoy the way things were revealed as she stepped into her world. I felt the urgency in her performance, the time and the music really brought this sense of time running out. Love that it played like a silent film. Great choices in color as well. Red was used in this short film to show desire and death. Blue showing the end of time. I really would, I was impressed with the runtime of the hourglass with the actions the actress had to follow. Neat effect on the title at the end of the film, beautiful tale of loss in time. All right, cool. So that was them. That's what they had to say. Now back into what I got to say. First off, this is one of the films that are, are really memorable for me. This is an awesome film and it's done really great. I really enjoyed that the long shot was there, like just one whole shot, and I'm a fan of shots like that. I like when the movement keeps going, and I think that these guys really nailed it and knocked it out the park. So right away, I'm a fan of their work. Another thing, Scott mentioned that he liked it, how it played like a silent film, and I agree with him, okay? That's kind of like, how do you say, it's like visual storytelling, and Nilo said the same thing too, and I gotta agree with, with them. like we're using visual storytelling at that point it doesn't matter what language that film was originally shot in because we can understand it through our eyes through the story that they tell with their visuals and i really like that i love the long take i love that the, there's this sense of she's in a rush trying to get through this journey of time time's running out to find the love of her life and i totally get that you know she makes the choices when she's on the date with the table and she has to agree no, I don't think this is the right choice, and she dips. And I totally get where she's coming from. I totally get where the filmmakers were coming from. I really like that. Now, to get into some things that I just didn't like, I noticed that the, the film, this may be more of a technical thing, but I noticed like the dynamic range of the camera was really pushed to the limit. An example, if you were to zoom in and look where the trees were, look at the lines of the trees, you would notice that there was like this weird blue glow on the trees and that happens to me a lot when you exceed a camera's dynamic range in post-production so you know just heads up you got to expose correctly you got to make sure maybe bring a different monitor you know different memory card with a higher speed or things you got to consider i know that's like literally nitpicking and that's because the film was so good i had to go there to find something i didn't like it wasn't like the shots were bad the shots were great and i had to pick on something like that other than that i think the film was great and i can't wait to see more ¿Te ha ocurrido alguna vez algo así? No, no. Mames, no mames, esto no puede estar pasando. Se me está el calibre. Sí, o sea, no, no de no. No mames. Your kingdom has fallen. ¿O no? And there you have it. That was Hot Bunny for 20. Now. There's quite a few things I like about this film, maybe because I also like video games, but I thought they achieved it perfectly from the set design, from the way the characters acted. They basically looked like 40 year old men, but they were acting like they were still 15. And it even showed because at one point his grandmother showed up to tell him, hey, what are you doing? But if he's 40, how old is his grandma? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, a lot of funny instances, like he's talking to his best friend in the bathroom, he loses against a 13 year old kid. This is a grown man that loses against a 13 year old kid in a video game and he's like, 
destroyed. He wants revenge, whatever. You know, it's 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 a really funny, and, and the film had it's very you know it's very unique. From here's an example. You never see what game they're playing, and you know probably for obvious reasons, copyright reasons, we can't show a real game. And two, could be they just didn't have the budget to obviously make one, right? So they got to work where they got, and this is very interesting to me, is because you never see the video game, but you always see his reaction to the video game. You see both characters' reaction to the video game, and I think that's really cool. I think that's very unique because you felt in the game that you don't even see. You felt in the world that you can't even see based on his reaction, his performance, his acting, his talent. I thought it was great how he approached that, you know? A lot of unique little audio cues, like where every time they said Clash of the Doom Dragons, of, of some scary deep voice comes out every single time. And I honestly, I laughed every time they said it. It was a funny movie and I laughed all the way throughout, right? Some things I didn't like, there was an excessive amount of different camera angles here and there. Some of it which was a little too much. Some of it where sometimes I felt like they broke the 180, where if the camera, if he's looking at the computer screen, he's looking over his shoulder, but then all of a sudden, this camera went from being over his shoulder to being right in front of him, but he's still talking to his friend over there, so it kind of breaks the 180, you get what I'm saying? Shouldn't do that, you gotta look out for that. Another thing is that, for once, this film is not a film, it's basically a series and they put it in like six or seven chapters. Now, this is a film competition and a lot of places would just disqualify it automatically. You sh even if it is a series, just put it together into all the things so it equals 20 minutes and then submit it like that. There's no reason why, don't make the judges go through a review and, and go after it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't do that. Other than that, the performance was spot on. I love the set design. The music and sound effects were there. The performance of the actors were very realistic, very comedic at times. And honestly, I liked it. I liked the little things they did. Like when, example, when he got started on making his character level up, you see that in the, there's like this montage and his friend is doing whatever, sleeping on the bed or, you know, very funny film and I enjoyed it a lot. And that's basically all I have to say for Hot Bunny 420. And now for our next short film, Polaroid. But before we get into the film, let me tell you some things about this fellow filmmaker, Johnny Romero. ¿Y eso? ¿Qué es eso? Es una tontería. ¿Y ni siquiera quieres ver mi maqueta? Tienes algo en contra de las construcciones circulares, ¿no? De seguro vives en una casa cuadrada igual que tú. Aunque con ese peinado pareces un helado. ¿A qué estilista vas? Voy a estar pendiente de ti. ¿En serio crees que soy hermosa? A diferencia de tu secretaria, yo creo que tu peinado es impresionante. Como mi maqueta. Es como salido de un sueño. Si miras esto, vas a encontrar cientos de... ¿Sí? Sí. ¿Un pan de ajo, tal vez? <risa> sí, está bien. Okay. Muchas gracias. Sí. ¿Cómo es la relación con tu madre? Un poco... freudiana. Solo quiero que vea este diseño. Es completamente realizable y el mundo necesita ver algo así.
Lo siento mucho. Te llamo después. Omar, esta fue la cámara con la que tomé mi primera fotografía. Ahora es tuya. Disfrútala. Con cariño, tu abuelo.
And there you have it, returning filmmaker Johnny Romero with Pablo Gonzalez this time with the short film Polaroid. Now let's get right into the review. First though, we're gonna go with what Scott has to say. I, I always like what Scott has to say. He has some very interesting comments. Love the beginning with the title moving with the shot. I agree. Good choice of lighting to heighten the fear, but be careful to not darken it too much, especially on the main actor. The first jump scare needed to wander about just a little longer, and then you see the silhouette of the man on the couch. I wish there was just a little bit more time with Omar leading to the clues of the camera. Love the breathing as Abuelo was closing the box as if Omar is trapped in that photo. A little more exploring would have been nice before Omar comes to his demise, but overall, well done short. I agree with him. And now going into what my colleague Nilo has to say. I really enjoyed this story. Nice intro on the editing and the establishment shot on the cemetery. The film production took its time to do a good pre-production and post-production. Also liked the contrast of lighting on the cinematography with the camera blocking. Acting 100%. The conclusion of the ending of the short film Polaroid was soft but unpredictable to me. Very good comments Nilo. I like the unpredictability factor because that means obviously we weren't expecting it. Now going into what I had to say about the film, all right? So first off, I really liked the opening shot. I felt that was, you know, very creative using the foreground of one of the graves or cemetery or whatever to show the title and then lean into pretty much the, the funeral that we're having. I thought it was a pretty interesting plot following along that the camera was haunted. I really like that element, and I like the element of him exploring. Um, like, what is the camera? What is this? Like, why did my grandfather leave me this? How he founded the camera with his name on it, coincidentally. 
and then how he goes to play with it. I thought it, it kind of got me right when he took the picture and you see his grandfather on the couch for like a second or two and then it disappears. And then he gets into the camera himself. He's like trapped in the camera. But what I gotta ask is, you know, I didn't, there was like, like was, I guess he had traded places with his grandfather because it didn't really explain that he had gone back in time or whatever because he was still put in the box or whatnot. At least I didn't understand it right away. I had to watch it a second time. And me, I'm always like, I like to understand things right away. And I think a film should tell that. That was m what I had to say. Now, I noticed the film was a little grainy. I know it's, you know, it's dark, it's hard. You're, you're supposed to make it dark, but you, that's not an excuse to make it grainy. You gotta watch your lighting. You gotta make sure you expose correctly and know that, okay, I'm too underexposed for the camera that I'm using. I need to add more light. Does that make sense? If you use a camera that doesn't have good low light, what looks good, what looks normal in your eye or may look too bright for your eye is gonna be too dark to that camera. So you need to understand your gear so you don't get grainy images like that. Other than that, I thought the film was great. I can't wait to see what Johnny comes up next in his next film. If you are a filmmaker who loves to tell stories, please submit your short films at internationalfilmoperations.com and click submit. Also, you can follow us on all our social networks and platforms. So up next, we have the film, Remember. Enjoy, guys. La primera fotografía que vi de mi mamá fue una que le tomó mi papá. Tomarse fotos era uno de sus planes favoritos. Espera, espera, espera. Eso. Ahora, no sé, en el bosque. Y ahora, a ver, como si estuvieses, no sé, en el, en el metro de Londres. Mi papá decía que había que tomar fotos siempre, que era la única manera de no morir. Vivi, estás hermosa. Según mi papá, él fue quien dio el primer beso. Pero yo no le creo. Yo digo que fue mi mamá. Solo ellos saben quién dio el primer beso. ¡Uy, hermanita, la pillé! Usted sabe que todavía no puede dar besos. Le voy a decir a mi mamá. Pues para su información, esta no es la primera vez que nos besamos. ¿Ah, no? ¿Entonces cuándo? El primer beso nos lo dimos en la plaza de Bolívar. Fue un miércoles. Pero la verdad no me acuerdo de la hora. Ese día me cepillé los dientes como tres veces. Yo practiqué una semana antes con un espejo. Después de unos minutos, nos separamos. Uf, por fin, porque yo ya casi no podía respirar. Yo tampoco. Vivi me supo a saliva. Alberto me supo a jugo de feijo. Secreto. El día de nuestro primer beso, yo me di cuenta que me gustaban los hombres. Secreto. Ese día yo me di cuenta que le gustaban los hombres. A la semana me declaré porque era lo que tocaba hacer, ¿no? Yo le dije que sí porque era lo que correspondía, ¿no? Bueno, 
Muchas gracias por venir. Mi amor. Bueno, ya mañana puedes sacar la cédula. Sí, ya le tocó juiciarse. Pero sigue siendo una niña, ¿no? A ver. ¿Ya que tiene novio pida un chino? Ay, qué es eso. No, mejor que pida otro novio. No, bueno, ya. No la molesten más. Pida lo que quiera. Oh. Santiago. ¿Sí? Eh, ¿nos, puede, ¿Nos puede tomar una foto? O oh, no, no, no. Mejor yo les tomo una foto familiar, ¿sí? ¿Les parece? Eso es. Mami, ya. Ya, Viviana. pero no, ¿qué? Pero es que sale con él. Pero sí. Lo... No, pero le puedo tomar la fiesta. Y. Whisky. 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 <risa> bueno. Ay, Listo. No, pero es que Santiago. Santiago. No, es que ahora sí nos puede tomar la foto. Venga. Eh, oh, no, no. Doña Teresita, ¿nos puede tomar la foto? Es que a mi mamá no le gusta que le digan así. No, pero no pasa pena, nada, tranquilo. Doña Teresa. A ver. Mira, entonces. Eh, mira por acá. Sí, es una foto. ¿Y? Sí, no sé tomar y, una foto. y solo oprimes aquí. Mamita. Oprimes, no, pero es que tú te ando la suegra, ¿qué tal? <risa> a ver. Vamos a ver. No, pero es que se está feo. Ay, sí, perdón. Sí, tomar la foto. Eso. Hace una está bonita pareja, ¿no? A mí no me parece. Es eh, la manita, sí. A ver, whisky. 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 Y aquí nos quedamos, atrapados en esta fotografía. ¿Qué deseo pidió? Yo no estoy lista. No haberlo besado nunca. Esperemos. Mira cómo terminamos gracias a eso. No podemos quedarnos atrás. Hoy casi no me cierra el vestido. Tenemos que hacerlo. Este es el momento. ¿El momento? Yo no estaba lista. Viviana, aquí estamos bien, ¿Mm? estamos seguros. Estamos juntos, que es lo importante. Ellos dijeron que todavía tomó esta foto. Sáquenos una foto con mi mamá, ¿sí? Digan whisky. 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 ¿Recuerdas? Mamá, ¿dónde estabas? De repente no te vi y todo estaba muy oscuro. Ya no llores más. ¿Y si me pasa algo? Tienes que entender que este es tu cuarto. Que aquí vas a estar bien, mi amorcito. Y dormí esa noche y todas las siguientes. Dormía en paz, con la seguridad que ante el primer llamado, mi mamá iba a estar a mi lado. Dormí profundo hasta que esa cona se convirtió en cama. Hasta que esa cobija se convirtió en uniforme. Y mi paz se volvió su compañía y su felicidad la mía. Me gustaba imaginar que ante cualquier llamado de auxilio ya estaba presente y tomaba mi mano para calmar mi respiración. Mamá, por favor, quédate conmigo. Tengo miedo. Perdona. Yo no me voy a ir de aquí, mi amor. Yo me quedo aquí. Tú eres mi vida. Y ahora mi vida es tuya, bueno. Ay, primera trasnochada, mi amor. La primera de muchas. <risa> Vivi, estás hermosa. Sonríe, mi amor. 
así me hubiera gustado que quedáramos atrapados. Pero eso no fue lo que pasó. Mi mano es la tuya. Tu mano es la mía. Y nunca te fuiste. ¿Recuerdas? ¿No te acuerdas de mi papá? ¿A mis tíos? La luz entra por el lente e imprime sobre el negativo un recuerdo. Las imágenes entran por la retina y se imprimen detrás de las sienes. Y allí se enraizan lo más que puede intentando permanecer resistiéndose al olvido ¿en qué tiempo te quedaste? ¿somos solo un recuerdo? y aquí nos quedamos ¿solo un momento? atrapados en esta fotografía ¿solo un instante? la memoria de nuestro pasado sostiene nuestro presente Es en la mía. ¿Qué ves? ¿Qué ves acá? Tú llorabas y llorabas. Y llorabas. Y yo me quedé ahí al lado de la cuna, cogiéndote la mano toda la noche. ¿Y te fuiste? Nunca. <risa> That was Remember. Let's get into what Nilo has to say. Let me pull it up here real quick. Another short film with the whole package, pre-pro and pros production. My favorite part was the pace combination of pictures. With that, pictures can tell a lot about a story and a frame. Also love the music, kind of give me chills. And I gotta agree with Nilo has to say about the pictures. Now moving on to what Scott Mena has to say. Let's go. I would have liked the first shot of the, sh of the short to have been a photo and then revealing the characters. I think it would have been better to have a voiceover on the father's audio before the kitchen scene. 
I could hear the sound of the road in the background and the audio fading to not make it so obvious. Great narration. The style of the short is really captivating. I enjoy how the characters break the fourth wall and gives more insight in their history and their inner narration. Throughout the faded filter was a great choice to step back in time. The coloring we get farther into the present was perfect. The sense of loss and regret seeps into each shot. Your use of different clips and movements really show the turmoil of Alzheimer's. I have seen my own grandmother go through this and it was wonderfully done. Your cast was superb and I felt the emotion in each performance. It was so moving. So Scott had quite the, you know, quite the review to say, and now it's time to move into what I got to say. First off, I really, 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 really liked this film. It was honestly, it was great. There's not a lot of bad things I have to say. They, the filmmakers really know how to tell a story with this one. It was very well shot. A lot of times people struggle when talking about present time and future and how to deal with that. Like how do we show some things back in time? We show old clothing, we show old cars, we show something period piece. And they really established that with the clothes that the people were wearing. Something I really like that I always, I always bag on people for doing wrong is when they do the fake wild bars up and, and bottom. And so this one was 16 by nine. You can see it, it was the whole 16 by nine. But right when it got to the past, they went four by three, cutting off the left and right, which is really unique. And they did that to show that we're back in time. And back then, four by three was the common aspect ratio on cameras. And I thought that was beautifully done. Also, unsaturating to show that this was a memory. You know, the future and the, or the present that we're in was very well colored in and very colorful. But then when we go back in time, everything was unsaturated it was almost like they shot it in, in log and didn't even try the color and if they did i i'm okay with that honestly now going into the fourth wall break something really unique how they did it is just they just look at the camera and say like a few facts about themselves and it caught me by surprise i was like oh he's kind of talking to me like they want me to know these things and then going into a step further when they go into the house and they take the picture the family takes the picture of the boyfriend and girlfriend the couple and they stay still and they keep talking about themselves towards the camera and that was probably honestly i don't think i've ever seen that before like yeah for real i don't think i've honestly seen that anywhere else before other than this film and this says a lot like we literally have to watch all of these so that tells you like this is very very unique and very very creative and another piece i i like that they added is during that scene everyone else was walking behind them and and forward and they were just there as if they were still in the picture. And it resonated with what the narration said that his father likes to take pictures and must always take pictures because you can never die in a picture. Does that make sense? So it's almost like they were preserved for the rest of their lives while life kept on moving with them. And I really liked that. The visual story on this film was amazing. And with that, it was a great film. All right, our next film coming all the way from Spain, The Sadness of the Absent. Enjoy, guys. All right, and that was the film, The Sadness of the Absent. I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I know I definitely did. And we got a few points from Nilo, and it looks like he enjoyed it just as much as I did. Let's get into it. Very beautiful choosing of the location. Very rich in colors or LUT, if added. Good tracking of the camera, but almost lost on the stairs. I would have 
Love two kind of endings if necessary. Pictures of him murdered, performed, or when he breaks character and looks at the camera, blood or scar of the flesh, more impact shot to give it a strong ending. And I kind of agree with that. If he had moved his jacket at the end and you see like where the bullet had hit him when he breaks the fourth wall, it would have been more impactful. Like, wow, this, this really happened. Like, obviously it happened. It's based on a true story, but that would have been a lot more impactful. And I, I agree with that. I didn't even think about that the first time or second time when I watched the film. So good job, Nilo. Moving in to what Scott has to say. Let's see what Scott has to say. Here we go. Scott seemed to enjoy this movie a lot because he starts by saying, love the way you used the wave to wipe away the text and done clearly too. Great color grading and use of the yellow. Enjoying the different camera angles and shots made the scene feel more immersive and expanding the environment. Also, the shots are captivating, displaying the beauty of Spain. I enjoyed the last moment where Javier speaks to the audience as a step into the final day of someone's life. Great acting and duplication of two friends enjoying a day talking about their future before a devastating event will soon occur. And Scott, you're right on the money with that one. I agree with just about everything you gotta say. No, I agree with everything you say, honestly. Now let's get into what I say. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and read this word for word and then I'll go into depth on a few notes that I have. So first off, great film. Good cinematography and performances by the actors. The story and film were put together very well, flowed very well. To me, the film was a breath of fresh air, and I mean that. I really like the use of the drone shots. Many times, drones are used to show off and can be distracting. In this case, they used it for a title sequence and for transitioning to another scene. The use of color throughout the film, everything brings me into the film just so much more. And that's what I gotta say about the drones. While other people sometimes have a drone shot just to have a drone shot, it can be really distracting because there's no other reason that that drone shot is there. In this essence, they use it just like I said and just how Scott said, as a title sequence. And then they took it a step further by using it as a transitional piece. They had a purpose for their shots. A lot of people have shots just to have shots. It's cool just to look cool, but this film is telling a story and therefore every shot move the story forward. And I like how they use those drone shots. A lot of times drone shots are just used, it's a drone shot. This time it was like, look, we're transitioning. We're now in the city, we're now walking away. And in the shot of the drone shot, you see them walking up the stairs. So very good job. Going back into what I have to say, performance wise, the actors killed it. They really delivered their parts well. You see the friendships they have and the concern that, can't say his name right, Dorian has for Javier and the protesters. How Javier argues back about what's going on on the Canary Islands isn't fair to the people. Some things that I didn't like was their heads come out of frame every now and then. Again, I go back to the wild bars. Naturally, you can see them, and if they fit, the whole image will fit. Then adding the bars will take away from it. Does that make sense? A lot of times in cameras that are shot in 2.3 or 2.2, or whatever aspect ratio it is, you can see it. In this camera, it's 16 by nine. So you can see the whole frame. So they're kind of pretending like it's there and more of a device if you really want to do it you would just tape the frame on on the back of your monitor that's how people get away with it but in this instance they don't seem to have that so therefore their heads kind of cut off on the stairs when they're walking like right here you don't do that like that's just honestly a little unprofessional and i i don't like to say that over a film that i like so much and a lot of films that have been submitted have done this i think there's only one film that was actually shot out of 16 by 9 Unless there's an actual purpose, there's no reason for it to be there. And that's pretty much what I have to say about the film.
And now for our next short film, all the way from Argentina, Poetic Relationships. Sé que posiblemente cada vez que piense en vos, el tiempo se detenga. Una avalancha de recuerdos se apoderarán de una realidad ya completamente dominada por la inmaterialidad. Vendrá ante mí un personaje hoy ajeno, desconocido, una huella de lo que supe ser. Ideas. Pensamientos. Sentimientos. Ahora datos en la congruente construcción de mí. De pronto todo se detiene nuevamente. Se aclara. Sos vos. Era yo. Eras vos. Una sonrisa abrupta nos gana nuevamente. El saber lo que solo vos y yo sabemos. Esos detalles que nos hicieron eternos. Una rabia explota en un instante y oscurece todo. Atormentados deseos que no fueron se liberan, vuelan en cada rincón. Me someto a volverme impreciso. A darte la espalda. ese punto en el que comienzo a odiarte. Todo es confuso. Gritos, ruidos, más ruidos, más gritos, más ruidos, más gritos, ruidos, más ruidos, más ruidos, más gritos. Now you have it, that was poetic relationships. So let's just get into it like we always do. Nilo seems to have some quick little notes, so we'll get into that first. A poetry short film, the expression of feelings and rhythms. I enjoyed the handheld shots of the foreground and background. Good job using props and the ambient light in your favor. And being more of a cinema person, I really like the ambient light they use too. With that being said, let's get into what Scott Mena has to say. So right here, right here, let's see what Scott says. Felt like stepping into somebody's day and hearing their thoughts in a poetic point of view. Thought the way they did it was filmed, showed the characters true frustrations. The shot overlaying was a nice touch. The use of natural light, good. You felt Astolio's awakening and frustration towards the end. The breaking of the fourth wall was a nice touch to make the audience feel more connected. What would it like? What I would like is that maybe more exploration in color with that piece. Maybe test some different styles to see if it will bring more poetry into the film. Nice suggestion, Scott. Now, let's just get into my notes. I want to talk about what I said right there. 
So the shots I feel are on point with this film. We seem to be following our main actor and his thoughts. The story is told from a poetic sense. I like the fourth, the fourth wall break. It brings me back into the film, just as it loses me. I also like those trippy shots where the, it repeats itself for a little while. I love the use of natural light throughout the film. Really good cinematography. Despite what I like about it, I feel more could have been done. Some more color, some different shots. That's what I had to say. And going back to what I said about the fourth wall break, I really liked about that only because I didn't like that the film was actually losing me. I don't want that to happen. I want to enjoy the film overall. So just as I'm getting bored, the fourth wall brings me back into it. So it was nice. Maybe it should have been brought better. Maybe the film just isn't for me because I was already being lost with it. Another point I wanted to make, they, they used a good array of natural light. If, I think everything was shot naturally and I really like stuff like that. Now you do have the blown out window. I don't like that. If that happens, please use a light. Please, you know, light the inside of your room. And then after that, just use the natural light like you always wanted to. Those are my two main points with it. Other than that, it was a great film. Good job, guys. Now, all the way from the south of South America, we have a film from Argentina, Urutao. Enjoy, guys. pesadilla. Jóvenes aborígenes se juraron amor eterno. Eran descendientes de la misma tribu y se amaron con inocencia en primavera. en un territorio deseado por muchos, dispuestos a pelear por él. La guerra inició y con ella cayeron los cuerpos. La sangre tiñó la tierra Y a pesar de la intensa lucha, Kuimae venció. Pero solo fue el inicio de una era distinta. Una era de miedo y muerte. batallas 
se volvieron constantes. Y el deseo de poder y codicia simplemente cambió de bando. Invadiendo corazones e infectando al nuevo cacique, Kuimae. Yambui sintió que el amor se desvaneció y trató de calmar su conciencia sirviendo a los prisioneros. Itaete. Fue así como conoció a Itaete, un joven guerrero de la tribu enemiga. Al principio solo lo alimentó, pero luego sus charlas se extendieron por horas logrando de esa forma tranquilizar sus pesadillas, floreciendo así una amistad entre ellos. Lamentablemente, sus pedidos de liberar al prisionero fueron negados por Kuimae, quien solo vio amenaza en otros colores y el miedo a perder su poder lo dominó por lo que el único destino de Itaete sería la muerte llegado el momento de su ejecución el prisionero escapó Kuimae lo buscó por toda la selva hasta divisar sus colores en la penumbra si bien acertó el flechazo Tuvo un mal presentimiento. El corazón de Ñambuí no soportó más dolor. Fue ella quien ayudó a Itaete a escapar. Pero al despedirse, su pesadilla se cumplió. Las personas suelen descuidar lo que aman por atacar lo que temen. Adueñarse del caos para sentirse más seguras. Y en el proceso, encontrar diferencias donde no las hay. Kuimae sintió tanta culpa que pidió a tu pa un castigo eterno. El cual le fue concedido. Lamentando todas las noches la misma historia. Como un ave fantasma.
There you have it, that was Urutao. Let's jump straight into this review. Nilo has something very short to say, so let's say it right now. I really enjoy this love animation story. Very sad internally ending, but very well concluded. I agree, Nilo. Let's jump straight into what I want to say because I'm just so excited about this film. Good film. I love how it starts with the bird crying as we the audience don't understand the concept of it yet because as we know, the bird becomes the guy. Narration is very well done. Animation, spot on. The title sequence, how it shows the spears and the arrows, just it's a nice touch to show what's coming in the future. I like how the shots of the prisoner on the tree turns into a skull out of the branches. I really like this story. It, the narration is what sold it along with the animation. It looks really beautiful. It looks like something that, well, it looked beautiful. I don't know, I don't know what's beautiful. You can't say it's what's, you know, what's beautiful. It's beyond beautiful. The film was great. I had a lot of fun watching it. I, I just want to keep talking because it was a great film. But um, at this point, that's pretty much what I have to say about the film. They did an excellent job. They knocked it out the part. The narration with Maria was breathtaking. The film just felt like, like, like a breeze. It felt like I was just, I don't know, like something, a theme park should be made out of, honestly. So with that being said, that was the film Urutao. I hope you guys liked it. And up next from Ecuador, we have my grandmother, Fanesca. Enjoy, guys. Aún recuerdo cuando mi madre me llamaba para enseñarme a cocinar. Y yo tenía unos ocho años y crecí con mis ocho hermanos. Y entre todos ayudábamos a preparar un plato tan especial que ha sido tradición en nuestra familia durante muchos años, que es la fanesca. And there you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoy. Now let's start with the review. Last time we started with Nilo, so this time let's just start with what Scott has to say. All right, Scott, let's see what you say right here. I love the choice of close-ups with each ingredient applied to a dish. It almost felt like I could smell and feel the steam rising from the pot. I would like to like, I would have liked to have a shot of the grandmother in the beginning and then focus on her hands as she cuts vegetables and adds the ingredients. I thought it was a great choice to have the three generations sitting down and learning the same recipe together in the end and the shot of them in the frame. The style of the short, the use of the font, the music, and the vivid colors were perfect to show the rich culture of Ecuador. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. You really, you really knocked it out with this one. That being said, now that we heard Scott, let's get right into what Nilo has to say. Interesting, educational, and cultural Ecuadorian short film. Well executed shots, transitions, and voiceover. Now, I would have preferred that the short film be a doc short or documentary short film because it was shot structured to be informational. Kind of agree there. I see it as more a documentary film than a short film, but still was well done. Also would have loved for close-ups of shots of cameras with Abuela was cutting the veggies, the meats, and handheld shot camera movements. Made me hungry too, so that counts. I agree, Nilo. Now moving in to what I had to say. Enjoyed this one a lot. Felt like I was watching a mini documentary, just like how Nilo said. I like how the story is told to us through the narration of the grandmother and with the shots. Really shows that sometimes the best story is right in front of you and you don't have to go out with over the top writing to make a good film. Pacing is very good and like how it started. I felt like I was being pulled into another way of life. Now, I will say the wild bars, I don't like. I feel that they're fake and a little distracting. Should only be there if the film was shot in anything else that's not 16 by 9. I'm sure you guys are probably tired about me saying this, but I still feel the way I feel about these things. Same with the camera shake in the shots. There was a lot of camera shake, a little distracting. Other than that, very good cinematography. And just like that, that was... Oh, dang it, I don't want to end it like that. I'll do it again. And just like that, that was my grandmother, Fanesca. Hope you guys enjoyed. And now up next, all the way from Ecuador, we have the film called The Window. Enjoy.
Now let's get right into this view without further ado. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to that. Now moving into what Nilo has to say, love the cinematography and the post-production. I agree. This short film was about a young man dealing with himself or through depression. Audio out of place on the Foley. Yes, I agree. He was drawing and then the dinner table. Well executed short film again. Going to what Scott has to say. Let's just get right into what Scott has to say. Make sure to take out the loud beep before the beginning of the movie. I 100% agree. That was really distracting and should not be there. I don't know if that was there by accident or not, but please don't do it again. Great lighting to the film. Enjoyed the shadows, the darkness throughout the film, and it gave it a sense of tension, making the audience feel that something could be lurking around the corners. Great job with the characters and performance. Antonio's character displayed his obsession over the window and how things were affecting him very well. The dream sequence was filmed very well. Love how the camera panned to the side, allowing the audience to fill the void with their imagination. Enjoy the little scary hints of what could be in the window. I like how each nightmare brings them a step closer to the meaning behind the window itself. Very well done, Scott. Now for me. So I like this film. First thing I would say that I liked is, as you can see right behind me, I don't know if you can tell, but the bars are real. That's, that's the first film that I've seen in, in this festival, that the bars are actually real. I don't know if you guys can tell, but they're real. And one easy way to tell is when you look at the, the little screen when you watch it, you can see it's, it's already stretched. Two, the opening shot, you can see that the bokeh, right, the little circle squirrels that are blurred out are actually kind of oval shaped. They're, they're not circles or overly. Maybe they use an adapter on something that's already 16 by nine, but if they did, they did it the right way. Cause I could see that was naturally shot in something else that isn't 16.9. I know that was like a very general, like very technical good thing to say, but after seeing so many films that have done it wrong, it's good to see one that did it right, right? Moving on. I felt the atmosphere in, this, in the film was very believable. He was obviously obsessed with the window and the character of Antonio seemed to be very distressed over this. I like how he kind of ventures out, you know, he seems to be trying to get with his friend, you know, hang out with his friend a little bit, but his friend seems to ignore him, leaving him to again just be distressed over this window. He tries to hang out with his friend, his friend says, no, I'm gonna do something. Then he tries to go out of his way to join his friend at a party, only to have his friend leave him again, and he just keeps thinking and is, like his obsession with his window, whatever it is in this window just keeps having him obsessed. I don't know what it is. I would like to have a little bit more explanation toward the window. Did he see something in there? Cause I felt like I didn't see what he saw. Now there was a few shots that kind of explain like an example where he throws rocks. You see him, his point of view of him getting rocks thrown at him. You don't see who is the person, but you kind of have an idea is, could that be him that looked like the back of his head? And at the end, when he walks into the house to go to the window, it's almost like there's a clone of himself. Like, uh, well, there is a clone of himself, but it didn't explain why or how or what. Does that make sense? I like to be informed, and I know there's a lot of films that just leave it up to guessing, and they do it really well, but this one was not there. It needed the explanation in order to move forward. Sometimes the audience mind is explanation enough to move the film forward but this just needs a little bit more so there you have it that's what i have to say about the window we have another micro short film all the way from chile madrugada enjoy guys
So there you have it. That was the film. Without further ado, like we always do, let's get right into the reviews with Scott Mena. Okay, so love the abrupt pace of the short. Got my attention of the gunshot. Okay, enjoyed the use of black and white. The darkness in the scenes gave me a lot of mystery and suspense. Make sure, okay, make sure that you guys light as much as you can if you're going to be filming in black and white. Important. You can still bring the sense of fear and uncertainty with the scenes if it was well lit. I agree. Make sure not to get the cameraman's shadow in the shot. Ha! Huh. I, I, didn't, I didn't read that note from him before. This is the first time I'm reading his note. But it's something that I noticed too. And we'll get into that. Now, besides Scott, Nilo also had something he had to say about this. So going to Nilo. Nilo says, awesome three minutes shorts. Straight to the point. I also like the black and white brownish nor look. The only abrupt shot that took me out of the movement is the jump cut after he gets shot. I would suggest cut to a close up around his face to show emotion or the prop. Also, I saw he looked away for a moment and is trying to get himself the shot and when he drops on the ground. So there you go. That's what Nilo had to say. And, you know, I kind of agree. I think it would have been cool if he had got shot because, as you see in the film, there's multiples of him. He shoots himself. So imagine the look of his face when he realizes it's himself. Go into what I say. Right? I like the concept of the film. It looks like it's stuck in some kind of time loop. I noticed the clock is the same. So I'm not sure if you noticed. There's two shots of a clock. There's, you know, one in the beginning and one like around the middle. The same time is on both times. So when they showed the clock the second time, it's still the first time. I'm not sure if you guys noticed that, but that gives me the, oh, stuck in this weird type of loop or whatever. The music flowed very nice, and the film overall moved forward in a nice fluid motion that kept me interested in what was going to happen next. I was asking questions to myself what was going to happen next, and the film answered that for me right when it was the time to answer. So what that means, a lot of times you probably wonder what's going on here, and right when you ask that, it just answered it for you. Many times you ask, I wonder what's going on. Time goes on, and then you wonder that again, so what's going on? And that's when you start to get taken out the film. So right before that even happened, the film answered those questions for you, and I really like that. The film overall was very dark. Like, I understand that the overall look of the film is dark, but darkness made everything hard to see. So this goes back to what Scott was saying about how you need more light. You can still make something look very, very dark with more light. Again, I, I think I've said it in a few reviews, but sometimes knowing your camera's limitations. So if you know this is the darkest your camera can get to, shoot above that, expose properly, okay? You get what I'm saying? If you expose properly, you can darken the image the right way. Just cause it looks good to us in our eye, just cause, okay, this is, you know, I can still see this with my eye, doesn't mean that your camera can. There's a reason why our eyes are still better than cameras, okay? You need to expose properly, get that darkness in, and get rid of that grain. Other than that, the film was great. You did a good job, guys. Yo, it's your boy William Zillions here with IFO, IFO Radio. Radio. I want to urge you to check out internationalfilmoperations.com for our new indie line of gear and apparel for your favorite independent filmmaker. If you are a filmmaker who loves to tell stories, please submit your short films at internationalfilmoperations.com and click Submit. Also, you can follow us on all our social networks and platforms. And that concludes Chapter 2 of the International Film Operations South American Honor. Big thank you to everyone that has joined us. And don't forget, I'm going to be announcing the winners at the award ceremony in Chapter 3. If you have a short film and you would like to submit to us, please submit to IFO so you can compete with the best filmmakers around the world. Thank you. Have a good day.